So we have a circuit here and we want to show that the circuit obeys the law of conservation of energy. What that means is we need to find every voltage, every current, and determine what's delivering power, what's absorbing power. Okay, now that we think about it, the source is the only thing that can deliver power. The resistors absorb real power, average power, and inductors and capacitors basically charge and discharge, so the power just trades back and forth. Okay, so first, we know that for the voltage source, the voltage is simply 50 angles zero degrees. So the first thing I want you to do is simplify that circuit down to one impedance. Simplify that circuit on the right down to one impedance. So I'm going to have 10 plus J5 in parallel with negative J20 plus 20. Find that one impedance and then use that impedance to find the current. What is that impedance? Ohms. Okay, 28 minus J6 ohms. 28 minus J6 ohms is exactly right. So that means if I want the current through the voltage source, it should be I is equal to 50 with an angle of zero degrees divided by 28 minus J6. I is equal to 50 divided by 28 minus J6. Okay. And that's 1.75 with an angle of 12 degrees. 1.75 with an angle of 12 degrees. Okay, since the voltage source is in series with the 20 ohm resistor, the current for the 20 ohm resistor is also 1.75 with an angle of 12 degrees. Because the voltage source is in series with the 20 ohm resistor, they have the same current. 20 times 1.75 is 35. So you have to think about this. So that means the voltage for this resistor is 30 with an angle of 12 degrees. Okay, now to find the voltage across the capacitor, that would be 50 minus 30 with an angle of 12 degrees. To find the voltage across the capacitor is 50 minus 30 with an angle of 12 degrees. 30 and 35. 35, thank you. Thank you, Drew. Yes, 50 minus 35 with an angle of 12 degrees. So the voltage across the capacitor, I've got 17.46 with an angle of negative 25 degrees. Okay, how are we doing so far? Okay, the current through the capacitor is 17.46 with an angle of negative 25 degrees divided by negative J10. 17.46 with an angle of negative 25 degrees divided by J10 is 1.75 with an angle of 65 degrees. Where did the 35 come from? Oh, I did it way back up here too, Drew. I didn't even notice that. This should have been a 35 Alfred. I don't know why I started writing 30. 
20 times 1.75 is 35. Okay, what about um, the voltage for the 10 ohm resistor? We can use the voltage divider for these last two. The voltage for the 10 ohm resistor is 10 over 10 plus J5 times the voltage across the capacitor. The voltage for the inductor is J5 over 10 plus J5 times the voltage across the capacitor. Voltage for the, the 10 ohm is 10 over 10 plus J5 times the voltage across the capacitor. Voltage for the inductor is J5 over 10 plus J5 times the voltage across the capacitor. The 10 ohm resistor is 15.6. So the angle is negative 51 degrees. And the voltage across the inductor is 7.81 with an angle of 39 degrees. Okay. How are we doing? First thing you should do is finish getting all the voltages in the currents. All right, so you get the current for the 10 ohm resistor. One point five six with an angle of negative 51 degrees and notice that they have the same angle Alfred because resistors voltage and current is in phase. Then you would get the current for the inductor current for the inductor. They're out of phase by 90 degrees. So that should be 1.56 with an angle of negative 51 degrees. Then to get the power, you're gonna have one half VM IM, this is average power, cosine theta V minus theta I for average power, and reactive power is one half VM IM sine of theta V minus theta I. And the power factor is cosine of theta V minus theta I. Remember, if Q is greater than zero, the power factor is lagging. If Q is less than zero, the power factor is leading. If it's a resistor, the power factor is a one. You don't have to worry about leading and lagging. If it's an inductor capacitor, the power factor is zero. And you don't have to worry about leading and lagging. So the only thing I really need the power factor for is the source. Okay. And for the source, it's the cosine of 12 degrees. The cosine of 12 degrees. And since it's theta V minus theta I, which is a negative angle, it's leading. How are we doing? I'm not getting any questions. That makes me think you're doing okay. Or it's just Monday and you're tired. And we're halfway through the year of the pandemic. Yes! Alfred, talk to me. You just got the uh, ones and zeros, the power factor is just qualitatively. You don't have to do like a math for that. Cosine of 12 minus 12 is zero. I'm saying cosine of zero is a one, right? right? Cosine of zero is a one. Cosine of zero is a one. Cosine of 90 is zero. Cosine of 90 is zero. All right, so it's good, it's good. Not to mention, I just told you that inductors and capacitors and purely inductive is a zero. Purely capacitive is a zero. Purely resistive is a one. Okay. All right, so now, resistors do not have reactive power. Inductors and capacitors do not have 
average power. So I only need to find one, two, three, four, five, six values. So for the capacitor, you get 5.6325. Sorry, that was the inductor. 5.6325 for the inductor, negative 15.24 for the capacitor. Okay. The 20 ohm resistor, the power is 30.63. And the 10 ohm resistor, it is 12.17. Okay. For the source, the average power is 42.79 and the reactive power is a nine. So you should be able to sum this column up and get zero. So that means if these two are delivering, they're both negative, right? I didn't put the negative signs on here, but if the 50 volt source is delivering, this would be negative 42.79 and negative nine. So all of these have to add, these two should add up to 42.79, a little bit of rounding. These two should add up to negative nine with some rounding. So if the source delivered equals these absorbs, then it obeys the law of conservation of energy. 